Hello world, hello my fellow runners. In times like these, when language fails, the responsibility to encourage and comfort one another remains. I am grateful to be here. I am grateful to be talking to you right now. And I am grateful that you are here. In the year 1994, there was no hope, only darkness. This country went through a tragedy, the genocide against the Tutsi. But now, look at our country. Light is radiating from this place. How did that happen? Well, the rebirth of this country is a miracle. To see Rwandans making a decision to hold each other's hand, to rebuild and to engage on a healing journey that took us a while, but now we're here. And I can firmly say that we are not defined by our past, which was very painful, we are not defined by our traumas. We are a country of purpose. But let's talk about the, the healing, that process that I really um, believe we should engage. I personally um, was comfortable for the first time to share my personal story um, openly in the year 2019. That was my first time to publicly actually share with the world my story. Growing up, I was blessed and, you know, privileged to, to be raised in a beautiful, loving family. And I was happy and satisfied. But at the same time, I had this part of myself that I hated very much. I didn't want anybody to know that I lost my parents during, during the genocide against the Tutsi. I was a baby, I was just three years old. That's when I lost my father and my mother and my big brother and other relatives. And I just lived with that shame. I was just ashamed of, of that part of me. I was not free you know, to discuss about it, to listen to other people who were in the same situation. But I remember I started, you know, writing down my thoughts, my fears, my, my pain with tears, you know, questions that I was asking myself. And I didn't know I was going through my own therapy. And it's 28 years uh, now that our country went through that, but we can see some people are still struggling and they're not addressing those parts of themselves. But you see, if you don't really um, look inside of yourself, if you don't really look at your soul and you know, choose to go through that process to heal those parts of you, trust me, they're gonna define your life. And you find yourself doing things because it's just, you know, actions out of the wounded soul and something that you don't address, something that you don't heal, trust me, it's going to affect you. So mental health is really important. And it's something that we all understand. We went through a lot. I'm talking about my personal story, but there's some cases that are more complex. I know of a woman, she lost uh, her husband. She lost her eight children, eight children some uh, kids, they saw their parents being killed in front of their eyes. Some women were raped. It was, it was just horrible what happened and it's beyond the natural. So people who went through all that, through the different traumas, and remember the genocide didn't just happen in 1994. It's something that started earlier before some people started losing their relatives since 59, 1959. 
63, 72, all of that. So it's a trauma that has been generational, you know, from one uh, people to another people, and it's really deep. So I'm encouraging my fellow Rwandans to really uh, spread their awareness. We need to reach out. We really have to actively work on this because it's high time. We have to help one another. We have to open up. We have to engage in different conversations. 28 years later, we can still see the amount of work that we need to do. Our country um, is to be praised because they have done a lot. They have done a lot. But we have a responsibility as Rwandans to really um, engage into that different initiatives. Let's talk about this. Let's open up. Let's really do something um, to work on our inside. Not just focus on the outside, not just focus on uh, building successful careers, building businesses, which is so, so important. But we don't want to be people who are successful on the outside, but we are ignoring the pain. But the pain is there. So today, that's the message that I want to share with you all. We have come a long way. We have come a long way. And we are still making progress. We used to, you know, be in darkness, but look at us now. We are glorious. We are a people, a nation of purpose. We are dreamers. We are inspired. We make things happen. And I believe the big lesson that other nations have to learn from us is that you can never um, kill a country, you can never kill a people, and there is no lost case. Our case was a lost one. Nobody believed in us. We were like abandoned um, everywhere. But this is to show you that a people can actually stand together. So today is a special day because uh, my mother was killed today. I never got a chance to meet her. As I say, that was a baby. I just have a few of her pictures. Um, I enjoy her pictures. You know, I, I'm like, I wish I could, you know, have known my mom. But today is a special day. Um, April the 10th, she was killed today. A horrific death. Uh, but it's not for me to be sad. It is um, a day to celebrate life, um, to honor her life, to honor the life of my father, my brother, uh, my relatives, and you know over a million people of Rwandans that were killed. Uh, but today is a special day because um, it reminds me of the faithfulness of God. I am alive for a purpose, and so are you. You don't have to really uh, feel helpless and hopeless. No, we are a country of hope. We are light because um, we went through so much, but we survived. We are stronger than ever. As I honor my mother, as I honor Rwandans uh, who went home too soon, I want us to remind ourselves how special we are. We are special because we are here. We are precious people. Remember, unite, renew. <laughs>